Hello, my name is Dr. Gerald Chodak. In this video, I want to review external beam radiation therapy using photon beams to treat early stage, low risk prostate cancer. This treatment has undergone considerable evolution in the last 10 to 15 years with major improvements. The current way that radiation is given is a man will undergo an evaluation with a CAT scan to plan out exactly what the prostate and the anatomy looks like and then determine how the radi radiation is going to be given for each individual. A mold is made to sort of keep you in place each time you come in so the radiation is given in a similar way. And then that treatment is administered once a day, five days a week for a number of weeks depending on how much radiation you're going to receive. Radiation is measured in a unit called gray. Traditionally, 70 gray were used to treat prostate cancer. However, over the years, people have discovered that that dose led to too many failures. As a result, the dose has been raised and studies have shown that higher doses can be given safely and also do a better job of controlling the cancer. Now, how much is enough? Well, studies have used 75, 76, 78 gray, or 81 gray. The exact optimal number, of course, hasn't been studied in a randomized study to be able to tell for sure what exactly is the right amount. But generally, the belief is a higher dose is going to be delivered. The other thing that's important is the technique is using what we call 3D conformal radiation, or IMRT, which is a form of 3D, it's called intensity modulated radiation therapy, which uses more beams from different angles to treat the prostate. The idea is that using more beams from different angles allows the higher dose without raising the complication rates. Now, the treatment is administered for the several weeks and then the patients will recover. What are the side effects? Well, like every treatment, there are known side effects. There are side effects that we call acute that occur early during the treatment or shortly after, and then there are the long-term side effects. The acute side effects can be difficulties with urination, burning, frequency, some urgency, and there can be some diarrhea also during this time. One of the differences between radiation and surgery is that side effects will occur long term after the radiation is done, whereas more of the side effects occur in the short term after the surgery is done. But when you look down the road a few years after the radiation has been completed and compare it to a few years after the surgery, the results look pretty similar in terms of the side effects. Now, the best way to assess side effects is by using written questionnaires and some doctors use them, a lot of doctors don't. So when you're trying to find out what is the risk of getting your treatment, you want to know what is the dose, you want to know what are the side effects by the doctor who's going to treat you, and you want to know if those side effects have been measured using these validated surveys that are given to patients to complete, because that gives us the most accurate information. And then after the radiation is done, men are followed over time. Another difference between surgery and radiation is that with surgery, the PSA comes down immediately. With the radiation, it takes time for the, for the PSA to come down. It could take up to two years to know if you're going to get as low as possible. And then after that, men are followed and treatment is not usually done unless the PSA rises and even in those circumstances, it's not clear that treatment is necessary. So the bottom line is external radiation for low risk disease is one reasonable alternative for treating this disease. And specific information about side effects can be obtained from the doctor who's treating you. But in general, the complications seem to be somewhat similar to the other forms of treating this early stage disease. Hopefully you'll find this information useful. Thank you.